Hi guys, welcome back to another video from A Level Lessons Online. I'm going to be covering physical geography today. We're going to be moving on to part 21. Okay, we're starting to go into the realm of rivers, right? We have actually already started covering a bit on rivers. Okay, you have learned in the previous part on drainage basin hydrology. Um, if you have not, okay, be sure to check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. That part is very important. Okay, it's kind of like a preamble to this whole part on um, channels and, and more about your water side of things instead of air. Okay, so I'm going to be covering part 21 today. It's going to be on fluvial processes, okay, namely erosion, transportation, and deposition. In my next part, part 22, I'm going to be covering on your um, channel morphology, which is something that I think a lot of people tend to struggle with. Okay, so I hope that you guys will stay for these two videos. I think they are going to be quite valuable for you. Okay, so let's go right in. Okay. There are three main fluvial processes you need to know for this syllabus. It is namely erosion, transportation, and deposition, right? So these are some, some of the things that you've you, you've already heard before, right? Um essentially the how the process always flows, okay, it always goes from erosion down to transportation down to deposition. Usually this is always the process. Because to begin with, okay, your sediments must first be eroded before they can be transported. And after they're being transported, they will have to definitely be de uh, deposited. Uh, deposited somewhere as well okay so we're gonna first jump into erosion types of erosion okay essentially erosion by definition is very very simple it is the breaking down of sediments right it makes sense because uh, very simply when i erode something or i weather something it basically has this form of degradation that it is starting to go and undergo this process of breaking down all right so it's the breaking down of sediments okay so there are four main types of erosion processes in the river. It is basically abrasion, hydraulic action, attrition, and solution. Let's go right in first into a very very quick um, picture, okay, to kind of show you what these um, different types of erosion how they look like in the river. So as you can see, right, A stands for hydraulic action. So hydraulic action, if you notice, occurs along the banks. So this is A. The one in green is A. Right, they occur along the river banks. B is abrasion which occurs along the river bed. So the bottom is always the bed. The sides are the banks. Remember this, okay? Alright, and then we've got C which is attrition. Attrition basically occurs anywhere in the river. So attrition is basically, we'll go through later, but it's these sediments hitting into each other. So they do not come in contact with the river bank or the river bed. Okay, and lastly, corrosion. You guys do not need to know that. Okay, but there's this other one called solution, which we'll be learning. Solution is basically as a result of a solution. Lah. So it is basically when there is a certain chemical in the water that, that that chemical itself breaks down the rock or the mineral. Okay, so the types of abrasion, uh, sorry, types of erosion. Firstly, we're going to be covering abrasion. All right, abrasion refers to the wearing away of mainly the river bed and sometimes the river bank. Okay, depends, okay? Um, it could be both at the same time, okay, it, it is up to whatever the river feels like doing, okay, that may sound a bit weird, okay, but that's essentially what it is, alright, so it refers to the weighing away, away of river bed and river bank, alright, um, usually river, the river bed, okay, abrasion is usually the river bed, so the action type is usually a down cutting action, so down cutting basically means that it is just cuts downwards instead, very simple. Okay, so it is most effective in the upper course okay, due to the presence of large and coarse bed load. Okay, so when you're at the upper course, okay, upper course tends to have a lot of huge, huge rocks. Right? You just think about a mountain, okay, there's a lot of huge rocks up there. And down the river, okay, as you go down, 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 down to a lower course, there's a lot of finer sediments. Okay, so where there is a lot of big rocks is at the upper course. Okay, so as a result of this large course um bed load, okay, it will cause a lot of turbulent flow. Okay, and turbulent flow will actually stimulate abrasion. Okay, so because of this down cutting action, which basically looks something like this, down cutting, it will form a V-shaped channel, which is the last point over here. So abrasion, just very, very simple. Just remember that it just cuts downwards into the river bed. Okay, so next one, you've got hydraulic action. Hydraulic action tends to hit the river banks instead. So the river banks, as we have mentioned, is everything that's at the side. So the river banks are at the side. Okay, so it refers to the sheer force of flowing water sufficient to dislodge particles or fragments okay, of unconsolidated material into the channel results in the collapse and retreat of river banks. So basically what happens is that there will always be erosion that's taking place in the form of abrasion. They'll hit the sides over here and this can cause the entire river bank to collapse resulting in sort of this U-shaped um, um, uh, river channel instead. 
Okay, so it is a form of lateral erosion, which makes sense because it is heading horizontally like this. Okay, so it widens the river channel in, in the form of a U-shape. Okay, then we've got attrition. So like I've mentioned before, okay, attrition is basically the constant collision and grinding of sediment load against one another. Okay, so that means this occurs in the river itself when two sediments come together and it's kind of like fight. Okay, so they constantly collide and grind with each other. This will cause them to become even smaller over time okay, because sediments will fall off, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so it impacts the efficiency of channel downstream as erosion reduces the size of the load and hence reducing the friction. So we'll talk about channel efficiency later on. But essentially what this means is that when there's reduce when the when the rocks hit into each other and make and, and, and kinda like erode each other, they actually cause each other to become even smoother. So when they cause each other to actually become even smoother, this will actually result in lesser friction because water can pass through very seamless along the along these sediments. As a result, this will improve the channel efficiency, which means that there's higher velocity. You will learn later the channel of roughness, uh, uh, I mean the roughness of the channel, okay, and then it will also help to um, get more discharge okay, to actually flow through the river. Okay, next one, solution. Ignore my typo up here. This is wrong. It is not attrition up here. Okay, it's supposed to be solution. Right, so solution basically is the removal of soluble rock material or minerals. So it often happens in areas where there is limestone. Okay, because limestone is a very soluble rock. Okay, so it is very, very soluble in acidic water. Okay, which is a form of a solution. Okay, because solution basically means that it is a chemical mixed with water. That is a solution. Okay, so it tends to work in hand with the solution process of transportation, which I'll be covering very, very shortly. Okay, so like I've just mentioned, okay, we're going to move on to transportation, okay? I don't want to harp too much on erosion because actually it's very, very simple. Just understand what the four main erosion types are. So essentially, transportation is the downstream movement of the load. Okay, river channels, they always move from upper course to lower course. Okay, they never move from lower course to upper course. Because of why? Because of gravity, right? So it's basically the downstream movement. So it's moving downwards, okay, into the river. There are four types. Solution, suspension, sortation, and traction. Let's go through. So solution, the first one, is basically eroded rock minerals being dissolved and carried along in water as individual ions. Okay, it takes place despite the river energy level and in the humid tropics, okay, chemical weathering of rocks is highly efficient. Hence solution load is important. Okay, what I what am I talking about here? When I'm talking about the bottom one, okay, this is basically referring to my limestone. Okay, limestone is basically what I'm talking about over here. And when I talk about the top part, okay, I'm basically saying that why I said that solution, the erosion version of solution and the solution version, sorry, the solution version of erosion and transportation work in hand, okay, is because this is the only way which all your soluble materials are being carried. Okay, as they are being carried in this acidic water, it is a form of solution. This solution, which had also broken down the rocks, is what will carry them down the river as well. Get it? Okay, we play that if you're not sure. All right, suspension. Okay, suspension is basically the final particles carried by water without touching the river channel. Okay, so this is basically like it's kind of like attrition, right? They don't touch the river bank. They don't touch the river um um bit as well. So you think of it like a river like this. Basically, it's every portion of stuff that is in here that is moving towards you. Okay, so there's more when there's more turbulent flow. Okay, larger particles can be transported in suspension as well. Okay, I'll cover turbulent flow in a bonus video if you guys want it. Okay, but very simply, suspension is basically water that is, I mean, particles that are basically floating in the water. So you think of it like suspension, right? When you suspend in the air, you're basically like floating in air, right? So when you suspend in water, it basically means the particles are suspended in the water. They are not touching anything, but they are flowing along with the river current. Okay, saltation. Saltation is basically the skipping motion of middle-sized rocks along the river bit. So you think of it as a river bit like this, right? The rocks are basically just skipping along. You think of it as a rock, they're just skipping, and they're skipping, and they're skipping. Okay, so it's a cumulative process. Okay, when one rock hits another, all of them will start to move. Okay, so you think of it as them jumping and then bumping each other, and then it, they kind of like pass on the baton. Okay, they start to jump together as well. Alright, traction is the simplest of all. It is very simply when when rocks are feeling lazy, when your when your minerals are when your materials are feeling lazy, they're basically just rolling along the river bit. Okay, so it only happens when stream levels are extremely high. The 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 energy is extremely high. Okay, in order for the coarser and heavier bit load to move. Okay, so it transports the coarse bit load via sliding, rolling, or hopping motion. So you think of it as a river bit. They are just gliding along the river bit like that. Alright, deposition is very, very simple. I'll go through very briefly. Essentially, it is the dropping of particles that were transported in water. 
So the load is deposited according to the size. So this is sorted out according to the size and weight. Okay, if you guys have heard of the juice shrooms curve, okay, I'll go through another video, okay, but that is a very good indicator of the velocity and how f- um, different sediments drop at which which point of the of the river. Okay, it occurs due to a sudden decrease in gradient, slower velocity, or a decrease in volume of water. All right, so deposition, there's no different types of deposition. Okay, they, all rocks have to deposit somewhere as long as they're floating in the water. Okay, but how they deposit is dependent on the weight and the location and their size as well as how fast the river velocity and energy is. Right, so take all these into account when, when you're talking about deposition. Okay, I'll, more, I'll cover more on deposition when I talk about the Drew Shum's curve um, as well. Okay, so very simply, exam requirements are very, very simple for this topic. You just need to understand and be able to explain each erosion, transportation, and deposition pro- process. Quite simple. Okay, identify the type of process which produces different channel patterns. So this is why I'll go in the next video. Okay, but for this video, I just want you to understand all the different types of erosion, transportation, and deposition itself. Lah. Okay, that means the four different types of erosion, the four different types of transportation. How do they work in hand with each other? And how is it so that all these ha- can result in an increase in the sediment load of the river or a decrease in the sediment load of the river? How do they affect whether there's a lot of friction or less friction in the river? Okay, I've already gone through those, right? Okay, as well as how, um, how whether are they actually making contact with the river channel in terms of hitting the river bit or hitting the river bank. Okay, so go through this video again if you need to. It's actually just a very, very simple fundamental video that you need to understand. Okay, the main part that's important should be the next part, part 22, which I'll be covering on channel pattern, channel morphology. That is where it starts to get a bit more tricky and it gets more important. So this is basically like a um, preamble. Okay, it is a prerequisite, so you need to understand all this. So if you do not understand anything, okay, leave me a question down below in the comment section below. Okay, I'll answer it as soon as possible. Okay, as well as do you play this video if you need help for this topic, okay, because it's very important. Don't get confused with these processes, this erosion, transportation, and deposition process. Um, with your aeolian or cars or whatever okay it's different um so if you need to go through this video on rivers again please do so if not if you did enjoy this video and you found it useful please be sure to give me a like as well as subscribe to the channel it really does help me out a lot if not i'll see you guys in the next part okay um it, the next video may be econs maybe job maybe general paper you guys would just wait and see but um, i'll try and upload part 22 as soon as possible so that you guys can follow up on this topic all right so if not that's all i have for you guys today i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye